Hi, I'm Ella, and if you're anything like me in this one specific regard, you really like It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And if you don't, I'm not really sure why you clicked on this video, but here you are, and it's partially to back out, so buckle up and enjoy. Good luck. But regardless, I am definitely not alone in my enjoyment of the show. Not only is it already the longest-running live-action sitcom on US television, but it's already guaranteed to have at least three more seasons. People clearly can't get enough. But did you know there was a Russian version? Yep, a single 16-episode season of It's Always Sunny in Moscow aired on Russian television in 2014, and it was... Not good. Like, really not good? Like, I don't know why they thought it was a good idea in the first place, but they really fucked it up. And while there has been some discussion about it on the English internet, most of it is secondhand vague information, and it seems like no one has really explored the true depths of this show or even watched all of it. And as a huge fan of Always Sunny in Philadelphia and... Don't tell anyone. A Russian? I thought I would be the right person to make this video. Or rather, my partner Finney thought that, and I am in love with them, so here I am. This video is dedicated to them for either blessing or cursing me with the knowledge of this show. I'm really not sure which. But with that out of the way, put on your scuba tanks and your warmest wetsuits, everyone, because we're going all the way down to the very bottom of the always sunny iceberg. The year was 2011, and though Always Sunny was far from being the longest-running live-action sitcom, it already had a formidable seven seasons, with an eighth season in the works. Two producers from the Russian cable company TNT bought the rights to Always Sunny from Fox at MIPCOM, a media trade show held in France. According to them, they were inspired to do so after Danny DeVito directly encouraged them to, but I couldn't find any proof of that, and Russian TV has an established history of ripping off American TV shows with various degrees of success, like that Big Bang Theory remake they did that lasted four episodes until the entire cast and crew unionized and walked off set together, but that's a whole nother story. Anyways, since I'm sure you're all curious about the show itself, we can fast forward to May 2014 when it premiered. A lot of English sources say that the show was just a shot-for-shot -shot remake of the original, but that's quite far from the truth. While the show very much has the same premise, and most of the episodes are close enough to the originals that the OG writers have to be credited, they make so many bizarre decisions and changes along the way, completely derailing character arcs and making up brand new plot lines. But before we can get to that, we have to meet the gang. The Russian version of Dennis is Sergei, who is, I guess, close enough to what I'd imagine a Russian Dennis looking like. The Russian version of D is Alain, and while everyone's acting in this show is far, far from stellar, I think hers is by far the worst but that might just be because I'm a misogynist. The Russian version of Charlie is Max, who they also call Fat as a nickname the whole show because his character was overweight in high school and that's important to the plot for some reason, I guess. The Russian version of Mac is Roman and they are obsessed with showing off his terrible chest tattoos. They're in practically every shot he's in and they make no sense. And I really don't think they're fake, which means that Pavel Abramov, the actor who plays him, just voluntarily got all of that tattooed on him and like just exists like that in everyday life, which is just wild to me. The Russian version of Frank is, oh hey, looks like this one is a mini game. Which one of these three men do you think plays Anatoly Petrovich Kovalev? The Russian version of Frank. If you said this one, you're correct, but there was a lot of arguing about it on Russian forums. The background of the gang is more or less the same. They're friends from high school who own a bar together. Their bar is called, wait for it, Philadelphia, and that's probably one of the better jokes in this show. Each episode is based on a specific episode of the original Always Sunny, but many of them wildly differ to the point that it's not always immediately obvious which episode they're based on. The 16 episodes of the show come from the first three seasons of Always Sunny in Philadelphia, with seasons 1 and 2 being almost fully represented, though often not in the right order, and a few random season 3 episodes thrown in here and there. There are three main types of changes that I observed while watching this show. The first is the most understandable. Changes made to make the show adhere more to Russian realities, such as when they made the tr Carmen beat up Mac herself because it would be far too unbelievable for two random Russian passerbys to stand up to a trans woman. Though later in the show, they do have her decide she doesn't want bottom surgery, which is honestly pretty cool and not something that the original show does, so go girl queen, I guess. 
But I think they mostly do it just to use it as an excuse for Mac not to see her anymore. Another example of this is how there's not really a big religious opposition to abortion in Russia, so they couldn't have Mac use that as a reason to be pro-life. So instead, they made Dennis pretend he like he's pro-life because he survived an abortion as a fetus that killed his twin sister D. Более того, мне кажется, что я помню, как это происходило. Я помню, как мою сестру куда-то тащит. И мне кажется, что я успел схватить ее за руку, но, но я ее не удержал. Because that just makes a lot more sense to a Russian audience. The next big type of changes also exist to try to make the show more appealing to the broader audience. Namely, try to make the show fit more of a standard sitcom formula. Overall, the show is far more reliant on montages and musical cues than the original. While It's Always Sunny is no stranger to montages, it uses them as an infrequent subversion of the genre that add a lot to the episode and in general are quite entertaining. In contrast, the montages in It's Always Sunny in Moscow exist solely to take up extra time created by the removal of the actually interesting plot points and jokes from the original series, and they get mind-numbingly repetitive Russian songs stuck in my head for days. Take a look at this. <laughs> I'm mostly showing you that just so you know how much I sacrificed to make this video. If you're this far in, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Furthermore, there's just a much higher concentration of montages, making them way too overplayed. While it would be a total waste of time to calculate the average montages per episode, or MPE, for both shows, and then do a one-sided, two-proportion z-test on them to statistically prove that the Russian version is significantly more reliant on montages, if somebody were, in fact, to take the time to do that, they'd discover that despite the vast difference in population sizes, they would still get a z-score of 3.448 and a p-value of 0 0.00029. That's right, folks, 0.00029. 0.029, meaning that even with the strictest of standards, there is a statistically significant difference. In general though, the show just heavily leans onto its soundtrack and musical cues, which would be far more excusable if the soundtrack wasn't horrible. There's this one song that's introduced in the analog of the scene where Dennis is listening to Never Gonna Give You Up. <laughs> And so, naturally, you assume that it's just a one-off joke song that you're never gonna hear again? Hell, Russian D even makes fun of it like American D does? But nope, it's in almost half of the episodes. The third type, and the type I want to focus on the most, is changes that seemingly exist just to make the show worse. And sure, that ends up being the outcome of most of the previous changes I mentioned anyways, but at least with those there is some vague justification that can be given, but there are so many bizarre changes that the writer thrown into this show for seemingly no reason whatsoever. Throughout the show, they show absolutely no regard for the characters' established personalities, constantly flipping things that are central aspects of their identities. Russia Mac hates his dad and does decent parkour for some reason. What happened to the Mac I know? They also constantly switch which character does or says something, like they make Dennis be the reasonable one when asking for money back from the waitress, and they make Dee say that it was her that shit on the floor and said of Frank, and they make Charlie get D drunk and threaten to sleep with her to manipulate Dennis. It really has the vibes of the can I copy your homework, yeah just change it up meme, except they still had to credit the original writer so what was even the point? The episode storylines get an even worse deal than the characters' personalities. Sometimes this show straight up feels like a Russian who doesn't speak English at all, watched Always Sunny in Philadelphia, blackout drunk, without subtitles, and then woke up the next morning and amidst their hungover wrote down what they thought the show was about. Here are some of the most ridiculous changes that they make. In Underage Drinking, A National Concern, or as they call it, Bar Philadelphia opens its doors to school kids, they got most of the original episode other than the basic framework of them letting underage kids into the bar and then going to prom. Instead, they create this bizarre backstory for the gang that involves Dennis getting dumped at prom. <laughs> Сейчас прозвучит музыкальный сюрприз от Сергея Ковалева. 
Для его любимой девушки Оксана. Oh look, there's that song again. And sleeping with Charlie's date instead, while Mac uh gets jumped in the restrooms for some reason. They don't really explain why. And then in the present, they spend most of the episode focusing on Charlie trying to mentor this kid here in Lee Picks out to ask out the girl he's in love with, but instead the underage girl makes out with Charlie, so the kid pays to have them beat up, but then instead, comedy of air style, Mag gets jumped in the restrooms again. Classic Russian comedy. In the Gango's Jihad, they once again got most of the episode in favor of that terrible montage of Frank I showed y'all earlier. Papa, papa, I almost feel bad for making y'all watch more of that, but do you know how many times I've had to see it by now? They completely get rid of the businessman claiming ownership of the bar and instead just have their boat, love and strap, wear and sailor speaking landlord tell them that he wants to sell their bar to put them all there. They also put in a plot line about Mac and Charlie getting roped into a pyramid scheme scam, which sounds familiar, even if misplaced, right up until the point where they both start unironically believing in psychic manifestation waves. <laughs> They also have Dennis and Dee absolutely trash the bar, which honestly seems like it was a blast to film. In Hundred Dollar Baby, while the general plot stays mostly the same, there are a few critical differences. Namely, instead of Dennis and Mac roping Charlie into underground fighting because they know he can take a beating, Charlie decides to go into the ring to prove himself because the waitress says that he's a coward. Of course, he then probably gets beat up and has these visions of the waitress, which are hilarious, but not for the reason the writers intended, I don't think. This makes Mac and Dennis convinced that he developed superpowers when he got hit by that car a few episodes before. You'd think that'd be a one-off throwaway line, but nope, it's the entire running theme of the episode. In fact, the Russian title of the episode is Superheroes from the Bar Philadelphia. The rest of the episode plays out mostly the same, but we do get more weird waitress visions. Maxim, you In Dennis and Dee get a new dad, they just throw all the characters established personalities to the wind. As I mentioned earlier, Mac hates his dad, but they also have Charlie get attached to Luther because he wants his substitute dad, and Luther exploits it while Mac tries to talk Charlie out of it. They also make Bruce Mathis a complete racist asshole who doesn't actually care at all about the people he's helping and is just indulging the whips of his wife. And then they have him hook up with Dennis and Dee's mom again, and they just leave and go to an island together, and that's just the end of that whole thing. Dennis looks like a registered sex offender is perhaps the episode that got gutted the most. The Russian episode, Bar Philadelphia and the Double Personality, hardly shares any resemblance to the original, only being tied to it by the theme of a bunch of prisoners getting released. The episode completely does away with the original episode's titular storyline, and instead focuses on a newly released prisoner who Dee had a pen pal romance with. After he tracks Dee down, she pretends to have dissociative identity disorder so that she doesn't have to interact with him. That does end up great for her, and the guy sticks around, so she has to pretend to have an altar, and the entire episode, the guy just insists that she's ugly when she's D, and beautiful when she's second D, and there's not a single other joke. I really don't see why they changed this episode so radically in the first place. Like, I really don't think that D.A.D. is at all more relevant to Russian audiences than sex offenders, and her name in Russian is Elaine, so there weren't even any good D.I.D. puns to be made. Anyways, D ends up flirting with the guy, and planning to run away away with him and take all her valuables, but once they collect them, he just ties her up and runs off without her. And that seems in the sunny spirit enough, I suppose. That's actually not the only time the show adds bondage into the mix, which makes sense because watching Always Sunny in Moscow is in itself a form of masochism. Back in the Russian version of Gun Fever, after Charlie brandishes a gun on his landlord, the landlord comes back with a gun of his own and ties Charlie up. 
But hey, who am I to complain? Denison D's mom is dead also messes with the personalities of our main characters quite a bit, but what I think is the most interesting about this episode is Cricket. Wait, you might say, Cricket wasn't in this episode, was he? No, you're right, he wasn't, and she's not really in the Russian version either. But do you remember that random one-off character that Charlie read D's diary with? Well, they call him Cricket for some reason, and not even like consistently, but just once. And I really don't understand what the point of this was. Like the only other vague connection he has to the original Cricket is that he was in love with Dee in high school. And I just don't know why I include Cricket's name at all if it's not going to be remotely him. Anyways, Charlie and Cricket read Dee's diary where Cricket finds out that his wife doesn't love him and only married him for the house and has been cheating on him this entire time. Then he goes home and his life is the ruin and that's the entire joke. There's a lot more ridiculous changes throughout the show, and I could probably do an itemized episode-by-episode episode list of all the bizarre details, but that would take up far too much time of this video. I might do that later if enough people are interested in it, but for now, there are more interesting things I want to discuss. I'm sure you're all wondering how this show even came about. Like I mentioned earlier, it's not rare at all for Russian TV networks to copy American television. In fact, one of the longest running Russian TV shows is a remake of Everybody Loves Raymond. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia really just does not seem like the type of show that would work at all in Russia. Let's be honest, it barely works in the United States. The original Always Sunny has constantly straddled the fine line of taboos and political correctness, captivating audiences that would usually have nothing to do with what it portrays thinking that it could not only be replicated, but tailored to a brand new demographic by a mid-grade TV network with writers, producers, and actors that are unfamiliar with the original material and do not hold the vision for it that the Always Sunny in Philadelphia crew has, was incredibly bold. But while the show was doomed from the start, it did not have to be quite this bad. Throughout the entire production process, everybody involved just made the worst possible choices for the show and bragged about it in interviews. First, let's really quickly establish what makes Always Sunny in Philadelphia work in the first place. Though it portrays absolutely horrible people doing absolutely horrible things, it always makes it clear that the actions of the gang are wrong, that they are hated by everyone around them, and that their shitty behavior and terrible opinions and lack of any foresight or empathy only end up hurting them and keeping them miserable. It never tries to justify the actions of the gang or to make them out to be sympathetic at all. Always Sunny in Moscow outright refuses to make this same commitment. In the official show launch interview that the cast and crew did, the producer of the show claimed that their vision for the Russian characters was to make them childlike in their selfishness, greed, and narrow-mindedness. Well, I've definitely heard fans make similar comments about the original gang, I really don't think that that's the right approach to writing this sort of character, as it not only shifts the blame away from their character and their personality and their conscious choices onto their simplicity slash their instinct, but it's also a fundamental misunderstanding of human nature and of childhood. And I think this really shows in the script, and it is only made worse by the lack of any morally decent side characters. While Always Sunny in Philadelphia has never focused on any of the actually good people in its world for too long, it's always had some to contrast the gang. It's Always Sunny in Moscow exists in a reality where everybody is nearly just as bad. Furthermore, each individual actor talked at length about justifying their character's actions to themselves, with the actor playing Frank Frank even stating that his character was perfectly fine because he's far from the worst dad out there, and the actor playing Dennis saying not only that Frank's parenting excuses any of his character's actions, but also that they tried to create a realistic product about heroes that totally could exist in modern Moscow. His words, not mine. As if that wasn't bad enough, the more interviews I watched, the clearer it became to me that the actors playing the gang were straight up just bad people. When asked what taboo topics the show brings up to light, the actress playing Russian D says it's disabled people. Not making fun of or being rude to or a systemic discrimination of disabled people, but just like disabled people existing. And for practically no reason, the actor playing Russian Charlie told this story about how he and his friends used to bully people by forcing them to name 10 rap groups and then beating them up if they couldn't. 
and everybody else just laughs at this and moves on. But simply, the line between the creators of the show and the characters of the show, and the direct intent to make those characters as unsympathetic as possible that makes the original Sunny work, is just nowhere to be found in this remake. What I find really funny though is how besides trying to justify their characters' actions, the actors kept trying to justify their own involvement in the show. In every single interview of him I could find, the actor playing Dennis made a big deal out of saying that he almost didn't do the show and was going to walk away after the pilot if it wasn't good enough, but decided to stay the last minute. And more than once, the actor who played Frank mentions that his wife had to convince him to do the show. It really just feels like the actors knew that what they had just made was terrible and wanted desperately to convince everyone and themselves that it wasn't, which they mostly did by talking about how much better it was than the original show. Side note, the actor who plays Russian Dennis really hates the original show. I know this video has been all over the place, there's just so much bizarre stuff about this show, and also I have ADHD. Anyways, that is to say... It's Always Sunny in Moscow premiered on TNT on May 12th, 2014 with actually very impressive viewing numbers. It's not that the 30 second clips the network had been running for the past few weeks leading up to the show captivated Russian audiences, in fact you can find most of them on YouTube and I'll let them speak for themselves. But rather, the show just happened to have the same time slot as Fizruk, a very popular Russian show whose first season had just finished on the network a week prior. Suffice to say, the ratings dropped quite quickly. Some people definitely kept watching the show, whether because they genuinely liked it, and there were some people who genuinely liked it, we'll get to them later, or just because they had already settled into the routine and needed something on in the background to help them distress on Monday evenings. However, many disappointed viewers quickly flocked to various forums and online rating websites to degrade the show. And degraded they did. I don't recommend even starting to watch this. Pity yourself. This remake completely loses the point of Philadelphia and turns it into chewing gum for brains. Brood. Stupid. Unfunny. Failure. A disgusting sight. The actors are not one bit sympathetic. The plot is depressing. The humor is lower than the basement tiles. Dumb protagonists. Dumb humor. Dumb plot. Basically, hashtag sad tragic in one word. There were a couple trends that I found really interesting in the reviews. First of all, for pretty much every one of the main actors of the show, I could find an overall negative review saying that they were a great actor and that the reviewer didn't understand why they were involved in this project. Conversely, also for pretty much every one of the main actors, there were negative reviews slamming their acting in particular. Second, there were a lot of reviews, both positive and negative, that called the show realistic and said that it reminded them of their everyday lives. And while It's Always Sunny in Moscow is definitely toned down quite a bit compared to its original, that still makes me terrified for everybody who lives in Russia. One person even went as far as to say, why did they even bother with staging this? They could have just carried a camera around, saved some money. Would have gotten the same result. That's the best motivation to fill out my naturalization paperwork I've ever had. Many reviewers saw just how bad of an idea this show was, pointing out how the Russian culture forced the writers to stay a lot more within the lines of what is socially acceptable in Russia, which granted still makes for some pretty terrible actions by US standards, but goes against like the whole point of the show. And one even pointed out how the Russian version came on a lot earlier in the day than the US version did, adding yet another pillow of censorship and restrictions on the stack suffix this remake. Granted, as I mentioned earlier, there were people who genuinely enjoyed It's Always Sunny in Moscow. The positive reviews of the show that I found fell into three broad categories. Those comparing it to the original show, the culture of which they didn't understand, those evaluating it by very low standards, like the girl who rated it 4 out of 5 stars because it made her smile a couple of times, and three, those that were written by what I can only describe as the always sunny in Moscow equivalent of Rick and Morty stands. By that, I mean those who think that this show is edgy and intellectual TM, and liking it makes them smart and special and a true Sigma male. As one guy put it, an interesting show for smart and romantic mature people. I like it. And as another one put it, this is Genius! It's hard to pick up on, but once you catch the vibe, holy shit! Also, a surprising amount of people on this one site listed kind-hearted plot as one of the pros of this show, which, um, I don't even really have any jokes about because what? 
there is so much more I have to say about this show, so feel free to ask me any questions you have in the comments. But this video is getting long enough as it is, so I'm going to let y'all go soon. But not before a lightning round of other miscellaneous comments slash complaints that I have about this show. They show It's Always Sunny in Moscow first in the title card before showing the title of the episode, which like, I know the original Always Sunny in Philadelphia also did that at first, but they abandoned that after the first season for obvious reasons, so this show really has no excuse. They changed the order that the episodes come in, which usually isn't a big deal, except when we get season 1 episodes thrown into the midst of the show and Frank is suddenly nowhere to be found and Charlie's just living by himself again and then Frank's just back as if nothing happened the next episode. One of the few good things that the show did is the original character I just like to call Ambulance Guy. Ambulance Guy drives around an ambulance and sells drugs and guns and other such items and basically runs a criminal empire out of his ambulance and he takes the gang's gun back because he's concerned about gun safety and I love him. I'm not gonna risk playing any clips of it for copyright reasons, but in the first episode there's this running gag where they play the YMCA song anytime that something gay happens. They had an American producer on the show for the first half, but then he got sick and had to leave and it's, it's noticeable. Like, the show starts out bad, but there's a certain point after which it seems everybody just like gives up and does the bare minimum to fulfill their contracts. Another topic that they said was taboo in the interviews was Charlie not having a dad. While going through reviews for this show, I found what is probably my favorite exclamation I have ever seen in my life. Which translates to, my mother's a woman. The actress who plays the waitress actually never intended to be an actor, but got hired on the spot for a major film role after a successful Russian director saw her dancing tectonic at a tectonic festival. For those of you who don't know, tectonic looks like this. That's pretty much all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed that and learned something so that my suffering would have been in vain. Please like this video and consider subscribing if you want to see more videos from me. And if there's some topic, Russia or not, you'd like me to take a look at and cover, leave me a comment. I've been Ella, and as always, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Put your baskets in one egg.